Welcome to Mighty Married Moms. Join us at our kitchen table twice a week as the Mighty Married Moms, Debbie, Linda, Wendy, invite spectacular guests to weigh in on staying sexy, vibrant, and healthy, building marriages with soul-satisfying connection, raising happy, healthy, successful kids. Conversations with Mighty Married Moms will bring you closer to the life you really want. Episode 36. Hi, good morning, and welcome to Mighty Married Moms. And we just had a really incredible interview with yes. Brian Johnson. Eye web- opening. Eye opening, yes. Mm-hmm. He has a website called Literally. Think <laughs> Great, Lose Weight, but we didn't end up talking a lot about losing weight. Hardly at all. Uh, you know, sort of <laughs> what we love about Mighty Married Moms is sometimes we go into a conversation thinking, okay, we're going to bring our viewers we one have some thing. questions that we've written out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then we just, I I would say we just had an experience. We did. Do you agree with that? And I hope that you had an experience as you were listening or watching this also, or at least had some things that you'd never thought about before. And, uh, yeah, experience. It was more of an experience. He talked a lot in that conversation with us. We talked a lot about body language, Mm -hmm. and he brought the word body language to a whole different level Completely. than I'm used to. That the typical, you know, when somebody's sitting there and their eyes are glazing over and they're looking <laughs> over your head when they're talking, we all know what that means. Oh, yes. Or when they're picking their nose when they're talking, we know it, you know, like we can assume. But he was talking about very subtle pieces of... Super subtle. Super subtle that we can, that are um, patterns or predictable that we can map. Mm-hmm. It was fascinating. Mm-hmm. Really fascinating. Right. What really, was, that's what was, how you... Yeah. You know, which side you rub your nose or scratch your forehead. Mm-hmm. And the whole idea that if you're feeling, if you're in a situation, you feel an itch here or there and you, and you scratch it. It's not really, we always think, oh, it's just an itch. But he's saying it's not just an itch. It's your body telling you something's going on. And, and every situation. Which I've never thought about before. No. I've never thought about it either. Although I have to say, it wasn't too long ago recently when I was wondering, where do itches come from? And I was not in a position to look it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where do itches come from? Yeah, no, it's that's a very good question. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good question. Well, it's I mean, it makes sense to me as a, a health coach. Um, also, you know, I always talk about headaches and bad breath and um, just feeling a little bit tired. We sort of accept it as well. I, you know, it just is what it is, and there's nothing else attached to it, right? And if you go to your doctor, and they're not going to say anything about what are you eating or what you know are um, are you upset about something or you know are things going on in your life? And so, so it makes perfect sense to me that, you know, an itch would <laughs> potentially come from something, right? Your body is... Right. So what you're saying is that bad breath, it could be a signal of something that's, uh, that's a, a malfunction of the body, a mm-hmm. toxicity in your body, mm-hmm. or um, not sleeping well. It could be a manifestation of something going on emotionally, which that makes sense to sure. the average person, sure. too. And what um, Brian mm-hmm. brought to the table, literally, was a mm-hmm. conversation about, about how something very, very subtle can be a cue... Um, in in a, in a in a relationship or in a conversation with somebody, and they and they and what we are bringing out of ourselves, we're not that conscious of, like right. scratching this or right, right. doing that, and that they seem to have ascribed some sort of a mapping, that the right side of the body is more of a masculine presence, and the left side of the body is more of a feminine receptive presence, and that depending on where your itch is or where you where you want to scratch. That that has some sort of symbol symbolic meaning. It was really fascinating. Mm-hmm. I was. I picked up so much. I was as a nurse. Wendy, I'm excited. Wendy, could to, you yes. could you talk a little bit more about that mapping? Because uh, right before we started the recording, you were discussing that. Yeah, right? and, and also and and from your background as a nurse, and, you know, in sort of our traditional medical yep. thought process. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, so what strikes me is the the more I'm around on the planet or whatever, and and uh, and hearing different people speak about different things. Um, there's a, there's, we have codified or made, made real or coded um, certain things um, in Western medicine, like, you know, you have a headache or you, you can't read the, um, the blackboard when you're a little kid, your eyes are straining, you, you need glasses. Now, there may be some other ways of coding or codifying that behavior, I can't see the board, and it could be an emotional topic, like, mm-hmm. I'm afraid that I won't be able to succeed in school. That could be, you know, as a mom, as moms, we mm-hmm. can definitely see where our kids, we we can read them, you know. Right. And so what I'm I'm learning with this, he brought up the concept of iridology, which I really don't know much about other than I've heard of it before, which is basically reading the eye, the iris, mm-hmm. the white of the eye, which is, you know, he gave us a little bit of a taste of that. 
And um, well, particularly after we stopped the recording. Yeah, yeah. 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 we all had our eyes red. But <laughs> anyway, um, so that 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 I'm I'm becoming I'm appreciating as as time goes on that there are other ways of codifying or maybe seeing patterns in how people's bodies work or or what could be signaling. So like I you think said, it's the patterning that's right. the key. So yeah. bad breath. Maybe we need a better toothbrush and toothpaste, perhaps, or maybe it is something to do with a, 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 a maladjust, uh, something that needs to be adjusted in our in our um, in our nutrition, or in how we um, what's what's the word I'm trying to say? Your digestive system, mm -hmm. right? Or you know, bad breath. Maybe you know, like a, a something that you your your body's doing in order to keep your distance between you and other people because you need some time to take care of yourself. Who knows? Right. But I'm appreciating the the whole chakra system. I'm, I'm just beginning to see that you, this is just a way for human beings to assign, to, to try to um, evaluate or assign, uh, to give uh, patterns a way for us to map the body out so that we can understand and move forward. And I just think it's really, really interesting. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's a very different way than I was brought up as a nurse mm -hmm. and as a person in you know, right. United and, States of America. Right. Yeah, right, and, right. and mapping the body out energetically. Yes. I mean, it just makes sense because we are matter. We've learned that in grade school well, and we're science, like, right? We're electricity and chemicals. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and if you Most took a water. microscope, right, everything would be moving. Even though it feels static, it's not. It's everything is moving. So it makes sense. Why wouldn't it that we could, you know, there's lots of patterns, energetic um, patterns that are going on in your body that would manifest in, you yeah. know, things that you, that you touching do. Touching your face. Touching your, your face. Or right. How you're breathing. When, you res when somebody asks you something or says something and you respond, your body does a certain thing. Uh, it makes it makes a lot of sense. And it was very powerful, really. Yeah. Uh, as right. If you've listened to it or if you haven't listened to the um, our interview with him, I would definitely go listen to it for sure because it's very, very, very interesting. Um, informative. Totally informative. All right. And let's let's call spade spade. I mean, a lot of us kind of in this New England area would say that that's a little woo-woo. Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> it was pretty woo-woo. But, um, you know, it's something that I, I'm trying to have an open mind about because uh, we were talking about a minute ago also that um, a lot of these, what we would term woo-woo things in, West, in the Western culture, come from the Eastern culture. And it's just stuff that we're not familiar with. Right. We weren't brought up with it. We don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been around a lot longer than and our those, Western it's philosophy. It's been around a lot longer, and those people have, you know, as, as you point out, Wendy, a lot of the, the people in the Eastern country, countries Live to be quite old, so yes. they're doing something right. Right. <laughs> I love those. I love the pictures of people doing tai chi in the parks, like yeah. the older Chinese people, like these ancient people, you know, with a lot of gray hair, and they're just <clears throat> gently doing tai chi. Who, you know, who am I to say tai chi is? You know, I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense when these people are living very to advanced ages, healthy. and they and they're reasonably healthy, or I guess so, mm -hmm. and they're mentally sharp, for the most part sharp, mm -hmm. and and there's Millions of them. <laughs> Millions of them in China. So who am I to say, oh, the Western culture with all of our heart disease and all of our, you know, cancer at younger ages and one out of, how, how many women in, or walk around with breast cancer? You know what I mean? Like, the, the, the stats are unbelievable. And so it's just a very interesting thing to me. So I, my mind is definitely opened up to, wait a minute, there are other ways to look at the world and evaluate health mm -hmm. and well-being and wellness. And if anything, if that's, if that's not what Mighty Married Moms is all about, then we should opening evolve. our minds, yes. opening our minds, opening yes. our minds to new mm -hmm. possibilities of, of creating the life we've always wanted. Yeah. Absolutely, we don't want to. Like Debbie has said, you know, we don't want a life that we're just. How do you say it? It's not. We're just not accepting it, but we're actually living into it. We don't just, mm -hmm. you know, accept what what is. We try to have an impact on it. So right. Yeah. We have it, an impact. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think you know Brian's an interesting uh, person because he comes from the perspective of somebody who was first interested in bodybuilding then really got into nutrition. Yeah, you should see the pictures on his Facebook page. He really was built. Buff. Yeah. yeah. Extremely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so he's coming from a very, you know, I guess a more traditional, like, yeah. I'm going to be a bodybuilder Body and learn focus. what foods I need to be able to um, build that kind of muscle. And, and then as he, his path continued, getting more and more interested and in understanding better this whole emotional, um, you know, energetic connection to Emotional, the food. psychological. Absolutely. Yeah. We come back to mindset over and over, over again. And over, over again. Everybody over, that we talk to. Mm -hmm. It's all about mindset. It's all about mindset. Do we have any idea how powerful our minds are in our everyday life? We don't until we just have to accept it. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I'm not going to question it anymore. I just have to accept <laughs> and do some of these tactics. And I, and I have been doing them. Like, Affirmations, visualizations. Yes. Yes. 
um, yep. whatever you can do to put yourself in the, the what, what, you know, you might call it the right mindset, but how about a, um, a better mindset, a mm -hmm. productive mindset, a, mm -hmm. um, a positive mindset? Mm -hmm. um, I just made a connection. What? And the connection is I've never had my own daughters, um, but I often will say to women friends over the years, if they're going, oh, I'm so fat or I, I'm useless, I don't have, I will say to a woman, just to use you for an example, Debbie, Debbie, would you ever, ever let anybody talk to Brittany like that? You just never would. Mm -hmm. And why would you, why, so, so we have daughters that we would, stand in front, like we would let a train run over us before we would let anybody talk down to them and say, you're fat, you're ugly, you're never going to amount to anything. Yeah. But yet we find it so easy to do to ourselves. And so it's a spin on that folk wisdom that I'm kind of tapped into. It's a spin on that, that mindset is so key. Well, and, and to start the mindset, you just brought this up perfectly, are the words that we use to speak to ourselves. Yes. The words we use... Mm. Um, personify what we're really thinking and feeling and they also create our, our feelings and thoughts so it's this kind of cycle that we go through right. and um and if we can stop ourselves from that negative yes pull and that's what affirmations are all about yes. and brian gave us some some terrific oh, yeah. affirmations uh, uh, after we were recording if you want to, if there are a couple here you want to my share favorite one was i choose to make this fun and easy and i think he meant about anything anything typing a term paper Mm -hmm. um, making dinner for the 75th time that week or whatever, <laughs> I choose to make this fun and easy. And it just kind of shifts, shifts, your, shifts. your perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, even uh, as Kim Duramo talked about, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people that we've, we've talked to about what you're thinking inside puts energy out there and yeah. people are receiving your energy, right? So she was saying, if you have a kid who's, you know, having a lot of struggles, right, you change the mindset of the parent. Right. You can have them calm down, and if you can calm down, the chaos around you calms yeah. down. And mm -hmm. Brian was saying the same thing, but you're, the energy that you're putting out there is what you're attracting. So right. if you're saying that to yourself, you keep attracting more of it. Right. to you. So right. that's why it's much better to, to say, yeah. I choose to make this fun and easy. Let's go have fun. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if you approach a task like that, whether it's washing dishes or write, writing your term paper or you know sitting down and, and doing the bank accounts, whatever it is, I choose to make this fun and easy. All the people who have to work on it with you, you're going to pull them yeah, along. Right. It's contagious. That. Sure. It's absolutely it contagious. It is contagious. And it's not, to de it's not to denigrate, you know, maybe the bank accounts aren't in the best shape and right. it's not going to be fun and easy to, to face that, those facts. But but neither is being glum and, and, and not hopeless about it. That's not going to solve it either. That's no. not going to make an impact. No. So it's not about being like pie in the sky. It's just about saying, well, at least we didn't go in the red five times this month. We only went in the red three times this month. <laughs> That's good, honey. You know what I mean? Like, or, or just saying, here's where here's our, where we're at. This is our departure point, and we're going to go forward. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go. Oh. Right. Sit in the right. how badly we've done yes, to get here, yes. or why did we get here, or or so and so is lucky and I'm not. That's not going to get you anywhere, right? right. So right. it's here I am, and I'm, and I'm going to approach it with making it fun and easy to figure out creatively. Open up your creative energy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which we've learned a lot about mm -hmm. as well. If you're going to open up that creative energy, you can't do it with all the negative feedback. Right, you can't. right. You block and, it. And again, you if your son was sitting down doing some homework, you would never say. Yeah, you're right. You are pretty stupid. Of course. <laughs> right? Of course you not. Know, of course you're not. So let's make this fun. So how can we make this math fun? Right. Like, so if we just parent ourselves the way that we typically or what we would want to parent, parent, yeah. to parent mm -hmm. like or to be par have been parented by, mm -hmm. it's going to go so far. And it's not even, and that isn't particularly woo-woo. No, that's not woo-woo at all. But there's a lot yeah. of woo-woo roots in there yeah. that, that we've, what we've unpacked and uncovered with a lot of our guests mm -hmm. that they would say, well, what you're doing when you give yourself a positive talk or what you're doing in that realm. So there's, there's some explanations that might appear to be woo-woo. But for the average person today in whatever month that you might be watching this or listening to this, you just got to get off this, this podcast and just go, you know what? I choose to make this fun and easy, whatever it is. Yeah. And that's enough. Mm -hmm. It will be really enough. Ah, but if you pair that with deep breathing. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, from the, from the belly. From the belly and not from the chest. And Brian, Tell us what he said. Brian reminded us that when you're breathing from the chest, that's from the fear and, and flight. Flight. 
and that is the parasymp no uh, the sympathetic I can't remember I'd have to write them down because I didn't actually take that course yeah I've only been learning about it in online yeah. things the right. last year. I think it's sympathetic nervous system when, when you get jazzed yeah. up and I think you're right. I think hiked you're right. up and parasympathetic is when you calm down. Yes. Or it could be the other way around, but it's one of those. Yeah. Anyway, the long and the short of it is yeah. the um, the idea is if you're breathing from your chest, it's a short, quick breath like this and and, fear and, and it's more in fear. It's it's and what that does Anxious. is it, yes, anxiety. And that triggers that part of your brain that releases the chemicals that, you know, cortisol and all those other things that are not going to be very helpful when you actually want to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you breathe from your belly, and I ask you to try it, viewer, listener, try it. Try yeah. breathing from your belly, a deep breath. In fact, I was just listening to somebody else on the way here <clears throat> who was talking about the exact same thing. Breathe from your belly instead of from your chest and feel, and feel how it changes your brain immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Test it. We're waiting for you. And then yeah. add a smile, even just a little smile. A little smile. A fake even smile. A fake smile if you have to. Yeah, yeah. Add, breathe deeply, add a little tiny fake smile, and say, I choose to make this fun and easy, and see how that changes and everything. And just see if, you, if it doesn't change the swirl of, of thoughts. Yes. You're gonna, you can call us woo-woo all you want, but try it. Try it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's going to make a difference. Well, <laughs> as a, a performer and speaker, that's definitely a technique mm -hmm. that I've learned you know, long ago as right. an actress, um, and if you're going to give a speech and you're starting to get all <gasps> anxious, you know, deep breathing mm -hmm. puts you in a whole different place and Absolutely. connects you with your creativity. I mean, it really, it's its an incredible tool. Incredible right. tool. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And we all have heard about affirmations and how powerful they can be. And uh, so, you know, that's not so woo-woo anymore. Mm -hmm. No, it isn't. Right? But, right, right. Practicing come. it might be woo-woo. If you, if you, I don't mean that. I'm just saying, <laughs> practicing it, we don't do it, we don't do it. We might have heard about it and say, oh, that's a really good idea. That really makes it, you know, makes sense. Or, and but I'd want it for my child. I'd want him to wake up every day going, I'm good enough and doggone it, people like me, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But do we do it? You know, so right. that's, that's the leap that I'd like to make. And I think the tie here, too, is, and Brian reminded us of this, that 85% of our communication is nonverbal. Mm, and I'll, I'm going to throw this out here, that. too. You know, at least 95% of our brain is subconscious. At least I've heard even yes. higher numbers. So if you've got nonverbal communication, you've got tremendous amounts of your brain that's, that's subconscious. I mean, you put all this stuff together and you realize, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do with intention that will make things better for ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we yes. just think about it tap into that power you, yes and prepare as opposed to just letting life happen right right and you know what i was like that for so long i just let life happen me too mm -hmm. absolutely I, and and in the last year and a half i've decided i'm not going to just let life happen i'm going to you know take the bull by the horns and and um, make my own decisions and breathe deeply do my affirmations do my yeah. brain brain training programs and yeah. you right. know whatever i need to do right. and think right. positively every day right. Right. not not as a pollyanna no absolutely no, no, no. I, no. I, I hear you i hear you but I, how you approach things, the attitude you take with you is is um, what you get back, and yeah. I've you know I've had good things coming. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's and again, sorry to repeat myself like a broken record. Wouldn't you want that for your offspring? Yeah. Wouldn't you want them to wake up every day and say, "I want to make this a good day," as opposed to just letting life happen to them and whatever that may mean, like you're just going to roll over <laughs> and go back to sleep or whatever. We want people to be awake and alive in their life. We want that for our offspring. So we really we, we're doing a huge disservice if we don't model that for our with ourselves right. at the very least. Right. If you're not doing it for yourself, do it for your kids. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to model what you do, not what you say. Anyway, that is true. I mean, it's, so just, so true. <gasps> it's so painful to see it in action. Like, oh, where yes, did you learn is. to talk like that? Yeah, yeah right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 it's a painful one. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but um, we need to wrap up yeah. our our discussion right now yeah. for our podcast. But I just want to. I kind of want to close it with the, what I think maybe one of the best things, uh, or not best things, but a great way that um, quote that Brian gave us that um, really kind of puts it all. He said, "If you don't go within, you go without." Mm -hmm. You know, and that pretty much says it all, right? right. So it's right. a it's an important journey, and I think for women in particular, uh, men too, but I know that men um, in the workplace they they have a lot of success coaching and and things like that, and I think women, um, you know, we we serve everybody else and we put ourselves as a very low priority we don't think of how important it is um, to take care of ourselves and we can better take care of everybody around us right uh, so it's it should be go move from the bottom of your list 
to the top of your yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. Self care is, is huge. huge. You know what's my favorite ex- favorite thing on that is when you're in the plane and the and the stewardess says, "If any of you are traveling with a small child, when the oxygen mm-hmm. masks drop, put it on yourself first. Right. Yeah. When I, I I was like, oh, this makes no sense, makes no sense, but it makes perfect sense. How can I possibly be of <laughs> service? How can I possibly be of service if I am not taking in oxygen and paying attention, if my mind is adrift because I'm struggling to put the oxygen mask on the little kid next to me? It makes perfect sense on one sense, on one level, but on another level, it's, it just goes against the grain. You're supposed to self-sacrifice and put everybody else first, but it won't work. Yeah. It just yeah. won't work. Yeah. 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 So. So thank you so much for listening in today on Mighty Married Moms. You can find us at MightyMarriedMoms.com. Please go on to iTunes and uh, please subscribe to Mighty Married Moms on iTunes. And you can listen to these episodes whenever you like. We love to have you. Love to hear what you have to say. Uh, On YouTube, you can leave us comments and Mm -hmm. ask questions. Mm -hmm. And certainly let us know what you'd like to listen to or are there other things that you'd like us to address. We would love to know because we would love to provide that for you. So thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Mighty Married Moms. Tune in twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays to meet fascinating and inspiring guests who will help you create the life you've always wanted. You can find these episodes and special gifts just for you at MightyMarriedMoms.com as well as a link to our Facebook community where we continue the conversation around the kitchen table. Please also help share the love by leaving a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.